Are you ready to discover who you came here to be? Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. Human Design is a system and a tool that is here to empower you and show you your greatest potential. Come learn with us and discover who you really are. Hi friends, Crystal here. New year and new you, and boy, do we have some new tools for you to help you transform your life into the one you have always dreamed of. We have some new ways for you to connect with us over outside of the show. So we have a free guide on tips and tricks to honoring your strategy and authority. We also have a language manual to your true self to help you understand the key terms in human design and how to apply them to reading your human design chart and also to your life. And we are so happy to announce doors are now open for the cosmic community, which is a no commitment or five month commitment package to connecting with us over in our private Facebook group. You will have the chance to connect with Leah and myself each month with our premium episodes through our program plus monthly forecast. There's also weekly aura energy updates, weekly tarot card polls connected to a human design gate, monthly market shares for fellow entrepreneurs to share their work and exclusive bonus content you will not be getting anywhere else from us. Come join the cosmic community to understand how to utilize the transits to your advantage and have a safe space to learn, grow, and connect. And we also have our children's class called Nurture Your Child Through Their Design. And our most popular classes are our variable mini classes, which are bite-sized, self-paced audios and guidebooks on the first two transformations. And if you want to stay connected with some education and love from us, join our email list and check out our website, which you can find that and every offer I just discussed down below in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here, and I will see you over on our next episode. Welcome to the Human Design and Astro Club podcast. I'm Crystal. And I'm Leah. And this is the podcast you've been waiting for. This week. I was going to say, are you trying to show the waves of last week and also this week? We actually, uh, we exchange a wave for a new one at the end of the week. It's like you think, oh, we're out of transitoriness. No, my friends, Mm -mm. the channel of community is going to come in and that I have half of. And so, and I've all, and then I also have half of the channel that's creating another wave for me so I just I feel like I'm just drowning in the deep end and that's that's where we're at yeah you know what's interesting as I change the background on my computer to like the ocean (laughs) then I was like oh wait that's that's just pretty true for what's happening right now with all these waves is it's almost like I'm growing under (laughs) Yeah, you just needed to you needed a uh, inner vision visual. Yeah, bring that into into form. You're like, this is what's already happening, so I just need to look at it. Yeah, I did. So yeah, well, welcome if you're new <laughs> to all the fellow weirdos. If you noticed with our dance routine, if you're watching us on YouTube, and if you're not, come over, come on over, come look, watch. Look, look at me in my dark lighting. Eventually. <laughs> I need to get some new ring lights. I had that one that broke a while ago. Yeah. I would have responded at this point. I have not. I have not responded. I've been a third line and just improvising and putting other lights in front of it. I still use it as a stand for my uh, phone. 
And then I put other lights behind it because <laughs> that's kind of how mine is. It's like a, a phone holder tripod, but yeah, it has a like a ring holder. light. That's all it is for me right yeah. now. Yeah. The ring light that I have had a stand, but that's missing. So it's like hanging on. The... Does anybody know any good ring lights out there? Because yeah. I brought a few and they all have crapped out on me about, say, about three to six months in. It's such. Yeah. And I'm just like, I don't, I would invest, I'll invest in a good one if someone can tell me what that is so that I can get that one. <laughs> and hopefully it lasts longer than three months. Right. You can't buy like, you know, a hundred plus, I'll even give, I'll spend $200. Just tell me what is a good one that is not going to crap out on me. Cause I don't want to be spending money that's not lasting. Right. So anyways, aside from, you know, our dark lighting here, um, this is a podcast for a bunch of weirdos. We say that every single week. This episode is called The Program. It uh, This is our weekly episodes that we consistently do that we've been doing for a little over a year now. Um, and the program is actually The Transits. It is the neutrino stream that is coming down from the planets that have been created through the stars that imprint from the planets that then present some sort of flavor, frequency. They're aligning to signs and they're also aligned in, in astrology and then they're aligning to gates in human design. It's all connected. It's all together. And we live in an assimilation. This is a movie. It's almost like, you know, we're in this giant tv show okay like what's that movie that uh what's his face was in jim carrey come on real quick Truman oh, Truman um, Show. <laughs> come on i'm like projector the fine head give me give me the information i got it that time because we're in the morning here so i'm a little i'm more alive in the morning um so anywho this is kind of like the truman show um, where there, there are things happening outside of us and things are working that we don't actually visually see in it. And if we have the awareness of, we would know that we are in a giant TV show and we are tuning into episodes called the program each week, each week, the sun, I'm so sorry, my son's screaming right now. Anywho, we're going to ignore that. Uh, you know, we have a family here. We have families. So <laughs> you guys get entertained by Otis often. So that was him's high sound. He's high sound also. So screaming in the background, that's, mm -hmm. that was for your, your ears, like just making sure that they're, they're working. Okay. Um, so <laughs> anyways, uh, where was I? So each week, the sun and the earth travel in a coupling pair. They also travel together in the nodes, okay? And in this instance, through the sun and the earth. So there's a focus for each week through the sun. And there is a grounding energy. And almost like I say, that's the energy that you can really hold the pose because it's denser. You can see it. It's almost like you can reach out and grab it. So that you can use to your advantage. It's like the sun showing you what do we need to focus on? And then the earth is showing us how can we hold it? How can we grab it? How can we materialize it? Okay, so that's kind of like a little gist of how this all works with the energy. And then we talk about it on here on how you can use it to your advantage. And if you'd like to go deeper, because we don't actually explain all of the gates and channels and every astrological placement on here, but we dive deeper into that in our cosmic community. Our cosmic community is a group of people that are fellow weirdos just like us that really are becoming, I think, like transit junkies because people are getting very, very involved now. I feel like, you know, as a generator, this is what I love doing is generating more heat for people, generating more love, generating more of all of these modalities and realizing actually we can use them. So that's mm -hmm. what we do in the cosmic community. As we go deeper each week, we talk about the sun and the earth gates um, through all of the different types. And we talk about, do you have them? Do you not have them? Do you have the other end? Do you have the full channel? And it's really been bringing a lot more understanding of what this means, what these gates actually mean, and then how you can use them. And then each month we put out the program plus, which is actually a more um, 
condensed and also deeper version of the program for the entire month. So we actually do get into the gates and channels in there. And then Leah also ties together tarot with the human design gate. And I believe that's when she, her like inner vision comes to life. She has tonal resonance in her vision. So it's in her body. So she's able to kind of see how the cards can kind of move through the frequencies of the gates. And it kind of, it's been helping people understand what they actually mean a little bit more. Mm -hmm gives a broader picture. I feel like between human design, astrology, and tarot, it shows the common thread that runs through each of them. And then it paints a bigger picture so you can actually understand it. You know, so much, so much of human design and astrology, it's a lot of talk. I've realized it's just so much fucking talk. And I'm just like, what's the point? What is the point? Yeah, it's a nice story, right? You get it, you hear, oh, there's a new moon. Okay, great. This is the, that's what, oh, it's a water sign. Oh, fun, fantastic. But what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> you know? So that's yeah, and like, how do I how do I use that energy for me? Like, yeah. and everybody is different. So exactly. So we kind of explain on here what's going on in the collective, and then you can take that and use it for your week. And and I'm telling you, if you want to dive deeper and you're ready to actually, I don't know, up level your life. Then you come into the cosmic community. Doors will open on March 1st and they will close on the 3rd. So that's what we do at the beginning of each month. We open doors and then we close them on the 3rd to kind of nurture the people that are in there and also to just better keep track of everybody. It's easier mm -hmm. that way for us because it's only us that we're, we're customer support. So <laughs> we're more so yep. like customer support. If yeah. she needs to have a conversation, then she's like, I need you to respond in this email because I'm the responder. Um, so that's kind of how things work around here. We also have educational episodes. So definitely take a look back. And if you want to know what they are specifically, Leah's made it a lot easier. She's a market. So she has selected every single one of our educational episodes. Uh, and she has added them to the beginner path on our website. So if you want to go down to the description down below and go to the human design, go to humandesignastro.com and you click on beginner's path, you'll be able to see all of the educational episodes that we have on there. And definitely check out our website because we also have classes on there. We have a lot of things upcoming. I'm about to put out a workshop if you're into magic. Are you interested in magic? See how we were talking about the, the cosmos and learning how to use them to your advantage. There is a deeper layer to that that I've tapped into with the body graph. I've created a whole system. So I am teaming up with another generator, another sacral generator, and we are doing a three series workshop on magic where I'm going to be talking about the human design portion and with the body graph and then um, her name is Maureen and she's going to be talking about candle magic and we're going to be talking and we're also going to be giving away if you um, get on our wait list right now actually can we drop that in the comment in the description down below yeah yeah so we'll drop that in the description down below we did just put out a wait list this last week um, because we are putting this out next month in March so you will be able to purchase I believe it's March 1st and if you get on the wait list right now and you purchase from our wait list then you will be getting a free, and I'm excited about this because I'm, I've been working with this and uh, Maureen and I are coming up with specific spells that are connected to your design, your human design and your incarnation cross so that you can use in your life. Again, we're trying to give you, you know, tangible things and that you can not just talk, like how can you use this? And really, human design, I believe, is magic. I actually I saw that there is uh, on Instagram because I was like, is there a hashtag human design magic? And there is. People use that human design magic. So mm. we're going to show you how to use magic in your design and outside of that as well. So, yeah. I'm that's sorry. that's like that. worth it in itself, though, because I would get it just for that, just for this spell. Just for the yeah. spell, I'd be like, okay, I'm getting, but you get that for free. And then you're getting a three series workshop with two sacral generators. I, I don't know. It doesn't get any better than that. I'm going to, I, I'm excited to hear what Maureen has to say about that. And also because I've been expanding and I'm a generator. So I keep generating more heat 
in regards to the human design body, body graph. If you didn't know, I worked at the Kabbalah Center for three and a half years. And so between using that, what I've learned from there, and then my, my learnings and experimentation with human design for the last almost six years now, um, I, I figured something out. I just figured it out. <laughs> and it works. I was even talking about it uh, with Maureen the other day, because I've learned how to activate a body graph. And that's what we're going to learn in this workshop, uh, a deeper version, because I did a, a more subtle version of that uh, a few months back, but the, we're going to go deeper in this one. So if you did join that one, you'll, you're going to want to join this one too, because I'm going to go deeper. And also there's new stuff that you're going to learn from Maureen. That's, that's not for me. I don't know enough stuff about candle magic. And when she asked me, do you want to do a workshop together? Um, I do candle magic. And I was like, that's all you had to say. <laughs> all I had to say was the word candle and magic. And that I know that fire is going to be involved in this. And so the Sagittarius and third line in me is like, okay, let's do this. Let's do it. I'm ready. So <laughs> Leah's going to be coming to that class as well. She's, you know, Leah's a fellow weirdo. She likes all that stuff too. You're, I know that you're I'm pretty I mean, I, I built bookshelves specifically to hold all my weird things. So yeah. <clears throat> my body. Your is, yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah. So with this one, this is my, you already took it off. You got to leave it on. No, I had to take it off. Why? I'm sorry. Because I had, I didn't reactivate it and I'm going to wait until Monday to do it with our new moon mm -hmm. live. Yeah, I just, it was time to take it off, so. Oh, you gotta wait in between cycles. I mean, do whatever you want. I can't, I'm not here to tell you. <laughs> I can do it. But I am telling you what to do. You're supposed to leave it on. It was on for a very long time. It went through a full cycle. But you got, but you don't, but now, now you're just open. You gotta have something on there. Like I took, so I don't have enough clear quartz to to do the more the more than the two grids that I have. I have a crystal grid and then I also have my body graph grid, which I'm pretty open. So I I I tell everyone to put clear quartz on their open undefined centers. And so mm -hmm. the reel that you can watch on my Instagram if you want to go over to Journey Through HD. And so I needed those crystals to show kind of a little um a little sneak peek on how how this works. And so now I feel empty because I haven't had a chance. I didn't get a chance last night because I, I I need to be centered to do it. And I didn't have time to activate it again, even though I know we have a new moon coming up. I, I literally can't not have that activated. <laughs> See, I need it to not have stuff on it right now. I think I needed a little bit of space. I did need the space personally. So it's helped me you just need to put clear on all of them. Then I could. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the meantime, I don't yeah. know if I have enough either. So I'll have to look. I need to get more. I feel like I'm always mm -hmm. using clear quartz and that's like, I feel like if you need yeah. crystal, that's the one to get yeah. or selenite just because so that you, your physical, like I I've noticed for myself when I'm constantly either holding them or wearing them in some way, that I just feel um, not so much attached to the energy outside. Mm, so that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like maybe I just need to put some clear quartz or, or, or some sort of clearing crystal on all of them just until the next one. I mean, do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm just saying like it, it defeats the purpose if you don't let it go through till the it's next like, cycle. Yeah. Eh, that makes sense. I know you're stubborn. You're Aquarius. I am an Aquarius. You're and like, don't all... tell me what to do. I have a lot of stubbornness in my <laughs> chart. And I'm like, okay, just be open to people's opinions. And then I'm like, no, just kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't like that. The thing is when it comes to all this stuff, like, you know, mystical stuff, it's like, it, you can't say it's this or that. I feel like there's no way to fully say that. Mm -hmm. All I know is what works and what doesn't work. That's all I know. And yeah. when you kind of like go against that, then maybe, you know, it could, it could, I don't know, I know nothing, defeat the purpose. So all I'm saying is maybe just or try a different way. Maybe it just, they all need to be clear right now. Or maybe there needs to be different 
crystals on your divine centers because mm -hmm. they do, they like, I feel them. Like when I, each time I put a crystal on there and then I start activating it, I, I feel almost like the energy of that crystal being like absorbed into my system. And that's kind of what happens. I was even talking about it with Maureen the other day. Um, and she goes, yeah, I, I did sense some like tingling feelings like in my body. I'm like, that's what happens. And it's, it's, it's almost like opening you up and also like locking you in at the same time. It's like allowing your definition to do its thing without trying to like, without having like any outside force or yourself going against it or some sort of resistance that allows it to almost like I'm trying to give some sort of a visual here, but like, almost like here's an, here's one. Okay. I don't know. I have a, a visual came to me and I just have to say it almost like, let's say that you have like a drain. Okay. And let's say that drain is, or is, um, a frequency, a channel. Okay. That creates definition for you, for example. Okay. So that, that pipeline is your definition. Okay. Now let's say, because definite people don't talk about this enough, but definition can get clogged. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's like clearing your definition, keep it and then keeping the smooth running water that's consistently running through it, almost like a, a like a water fountain, right? You want that flow to continue to go and go and go and go. And so it what this does with the activation is it allows you to, it's almost like pouring Drano. <laughs> down that channel, okay, so that it clears. And so then you turn the water on and it's just consistently flowing through, right? And then same thing for the open undefined centers, those get more clogged often, right? It's just yeah. that in our definition, we just won't recognize it as much because it's just consist consistently clogged and it's just like, boom, like the water's trying to penetrate and maybe you're feeling some sort of resistance in your body that could be your definition that's clogged. Now, it, your openness screams louder. That one, you know, that one you're aware of. You're like, oh shit, my open solar plexus is feeling mm -hmm. low. And so that's why I always suggest to put some sort of clear quartz or selenite on an open undefined center. And you can activate a grid. Like we had grids made for us. Like Leah just had showed you guys her grid. Uh, we had grids made for us, but I'm going to show you guys in our workshop how to draw out your grid and then how to activate it from there. And oftentimes, and I did it yesterday and I felt it as I was doing it. And it's, I've done it a few times where sometimes that could even feel more powerful because there's something about, because touch, uh, the cognition touch is a six line. Okay. And so it's a transmission that happens from your fingertips into your system it's like a transmission into your body that's integrated into your, and Leah knows what I'm talking about because mm -hmm. she has touch um and I don't I don't think you actually have to have touch to do this I think that's what just touch does right there's something that happens when you write something out right that you remember it right that's why they like mm -hmm. school they tell you to write it out or highlight it um, in your book, because when you do that, it's like a transmission from that page into your system. That's what I believe is happening. And I have total resonance touch. So I understand this, like we both kind of understand this on a deeper level, but I, that doesn't mean that if you don't have that in your design, that you can't actually use it. I just, I think that's what's actually happening for all of us as humans. And that's why writing is so important because it allows for the transmission from those words to enter our system. And I believe that's the same thing if you draw out your body graph. So, well, and you're like, wow, yes, we're, we're, we're gonna talk about a lot of things that I think need to be talked about in this workshop. So I'm super excited. Sorry, I keep going on and on about this. <laughs> it's stop. exciting though. It is. That's, that's what you do as a generator though. You get people excited and you share what you're excited about. And Yeah, that's true. That's what I'm here to do. And, and mm -hmm. like people try to say like, I, oh my gosh, my mic is not on. Hello. We just jumped to a new scene because <laughs> my mic was not plugged in this entire time, uh, which I thought it was because I had plugged it in, but it's, I am on a new computer that 
I honestly don't really like. I really like my old computer better, but my husband has convinced me to move to the quote unquote better computer. <laughs> um, but it keeps doing weird things to me and I'm just very annoyed with it now and I want to throw it out the window. So I apologize that that audio probably doesn't sound as good as it does right now because my mic was not plugged in. <laughs> Oh, geez. Welcome <gasps> to the life of a 1-3. We love you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you hey, I I get to experience a lot of that, I feel like, as well. And my 1-3s in my life like to watch me fail, too, because I don't do it gracefully. Yeah. And they're, they're just like, move on. Like, go to the next thing. Like, do something else. I'm like, ah, my life is ruined. I know. I do watch. I do watch a lot of you guys. Uh struggle with that especially on like um third line days people always come for me and be like how do you guys live like (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I I don't know this is why I cry about being a third line sometimes I don't know what to tell you Mm -hmm. I definitely am more equipped I know that I can tell that I mean look at a lot of things that have happened to me, like I got hit by a car, like a lot of people don't survive stuff like that. I can take a hit. I do fall gracefully, actually. I fall very gracefully. <laughs> um, But like I've fallen so many times just like thinking like I'm thinking about I used to also do horseback riding for nine years. I don't know how many times I've fallen off my horse. Mm-hmm. Um, Never really hurt myself. We just get right back up. Crazy. Crazy. Well. So anyway, anyway. sorry for that bad audio. Um, I was really, (laughs) yeah, I was, you know, and people have told us that our audio does sound, sound good. And so now I'm annoyed Uh, (laughs) because we try, we've, we've tried so many things with getting our audio right. And really, to be honest, we'll tell you what the secret is. Get a good mic. That's it. Just get a good fucking mic. Make sure it's plugged in. Um, (laughs) Plugged in, turned on, facing the right way. Yeah, I also didn't have it facing the right way a few times. And I was like, why does yeah. it sound like echoey? And it's because <laughs> it was, it, it, yeah, if you're, if it's in the right, it, it does have to be in a specific direction. I learned that mm-hmm. hard way as I do as a third line. So, so yeah, our mics sound really good because we both bought professional mics. And if you would like to know what our mic is, it's not sponsored. Just want to let you know that we're not trying to sell you a mic. Um it's the Yeti mic. Yep. Yeti. Yeti. I have the Yeti blue. I don't know. Yeti blue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I got it on. Actually, I got. So when my mic. So what's so funny is what happens. And this is how I know responding is like so correct. Like because remember with my last mic, I was like, I really should get a better mic. Like this mic's just okay. Like I know it does. It's like, it sounds good, but it doesn't sound great. And so I, but I didn't want to buy one because I already had it. So I'm like, I'm not going to do it. But then when it broke, I was like, okay, well, I guess this is, this is the time that I have to finally respond to this. And so um, when I got this new mic, I was like, oh, wow, this really, like, you don't need any real, professional uh like audio app for like just get a good mic like we don't have any sort of like sound equipment around us or fancy like I would just make sure there's not like you have stuff in the room that's going to absorb the sound because then it won't really work Mm -hmm. but I don't I'm in like an I I don't know how big this room is it's an average size room there's a lot of stuff in this room I have a bed I have carpet I have a lot of knickknack stuff. So you just want to make sure that it, if you are in like an open space, then you're going to probably have to put some sort of sound proofing around it or like some sort of shade and then like maybe like a drape. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm getting way too deep <laughs> into this. <laughs> I always like to tell people steps. Like as a generator, I'm like, okay, step one, yeah, purchase good mic. <laughs> step two, plug in mic. Step three, make sure mic is plugged in and you see the red light and then have that red light face you and then you're good. I didn't 
So I had done that originally, but then I think I hit something. And because this cord's so sensitive, it uh, like semi unplugged it where it, it looks like it's plugged in, but it wasn't. And then I looked down and I was like, oh, that red light's not on. So anyways, that long open throat tangent story on sorry for the bad audio briefly. Uh, <laughs> hopefully it wasn't that bad. I don't know. We'll listen back and, and see. I told Leah we might have to scrap that and start all over, but we did say a lot of good points and I'll be very annoyed to scrap that. Hopefully we'll just leave it and it won't sound that bad, but now it sounds better. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. <laughs> yeah. So I am getting ready. I told you guys last week that I'm going to Maryland on tomorrow. <laughs> like what is today? While we're recording tomorrow, yeah, yeah. What? So while we like since we're recording, because yes. we're recording the yeah, we're past. in the past. We're in the past. It all have already happened when this comes out. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I'm going to Maryland this weekend for a bat mitzvah. If you don't know what a bat mitzvah is, it's when you become an adult. Obviously, we know you're not an adult at 13, but that is the age that the Jews. I say the Jews because I can say that. You can't say that if you're not Jewish. I just want I realized I said that the Jews last week. <laughs> and I was like, I hope these people realize that I'm Jewish and I can say whatever I want about my people. <laughs> um <laughs> I like to refer to us as the Jews. Um <laughs> I feel like if somebody else were to say that to me though, I would not, you know, it's like your people can say things about themselves or each other, but you can't some someone outside of that group cannot do that. You're like, I'm not saying anything. I don't have a response for that. <laughs> <laughs> I try to try to be very neutral with the, with everything. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. But that's it, I don't know. Anyway, so I guess you can fill us in on how many human design charts you grab while you're with your family. Yeah. <laughs> See, I know I do that. I know that you know that I do that. I <laughs> tend to get a lot of charts. I can get a lot of charts. I don't even know how many charts I've collected, um, like my gate 21. I don't know how many charts I've collected in the past like six years mm -hmm. um, that I started collecting charts. And I don't know if I'm going to do that this time. And the reason why is because this isn't my family. It's my husband's family. And mm -hmm. I need to be invited, as you know, uh, with having an open throat and being, in, I need to be in response as being a generator. I can't initiate anything or, I mean, at least it never works out. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Never works out. So because this isn't my family and I'm not going to be, I guess, I don't know if the word comfortable is the right word, but we're going to go with that word. Um, I, I'm going to just have to wait for people to say, what do you do? Which I don't know. Some people might think that either I'm still doing hair and makeup or um, they don't care to ask. Because again, most people don't care about you. They're only concerned about themselves. So I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I thought about that. I was like, I wonder if I'm going to even do that now if people start what what so here's what often happens for me especially in party situations or gatherings in some kitchens environment is once one person finds out that this is what I do then there's there actually a, a lot of times I'm not going to say this is what's going to happen this time but a lot of times in the past a line forms um I'm not joking like where all of a sudden I have a group of people surrounding me and saying if they can go next. I've had people get on the phone with their mother um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, requesting their birth information. And even a few people that have called the hospital, like in front of me, not like where I say, oh, you I say like, oh, well, you know, you could probably get it, those records from the hospital. All of a sudden they get on the phone and I'm like, what? <laughs> We really need to know this mean, information right now. I didn't mean this. I'm like, it usually is a little bit more time consuming than what you think is about to happen. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I do tend to get people, obviously with being a generator, I tend to pe get people excited being in the right environment and it's sort of some sort of gathering or party event type situation. That's usually where I shine 
the brightest. And I'm like, why is everybody here? Uh, that's when my open throat goes, oh, I don't know. If I, <laughs> I don't know if I want all of this. Attention. Yeah. They open the floodgates kind of. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to open those floodgates and I don't know how, I guess I just don't know with his family because I'm not, I'm not, I don't know them that well. I've only honestly met them at other gatherings. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't know how uh, open they'll be to this. Like my, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law and my father-in-law all know that I, that I do this, but uh, I'm not sure how the other family members will react. Or respond. Hmm. Most people are receptive to me though with it, even if they're yeah. like they don't know. Like for a lot of people say to me, like, I can't get anybody to let to to let me read their chart or even get their chart. They won't even give me their information. I'm like, really? I get strangers information all the time. <laughs> I'm like too scared to ask. Like, I never are. even you I never. yeah never you, ask. I'm anybody. always like, well, so what is their What's their information? You never know. Yeah. I'm always like, like I have my I have my babysitter's chart. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. She is an emotional manifesting generator, which I think is perfect mm. for Otis and Milo. But more, Otis really likes emotional manifesting generators. I, I think it's like something with my mom. My mom's an emotional MG, and I don't know. He just like gets along with them really well. Um, I should look at their connection chart, but yeah, I get everyone's information. I'm like, I, if you're, if we're going to be around each other, I need to know. I just yeah. need to know. I don't know how you're okay with not knowing, but I'm not okay with not knowing. I'm like, even if you don't fully know your birth time, I just, I'll plug in a few different times throughout the day and we'll, we'll, we'll get a consensus. We'll figure out like approximation yeah. here. Hopefully the type doesn't change. Yeah. Generally, I'll just kind of, it must be like defined head where I'm just like, I just don't need to know all of that information. Guess, yeah, you don't. Yes, you don't like, need to that's know. That's cool. Like I might put it in, but it doesn't, I don't have to like do all of the things. And like, I have a friend who I just got a, a main mug from yesterday. Oh, wow. And like, I had to know okay. if she was touch cognition. So yeah, I did put her stuff in, but <laughs> I didn't like ask her her information. I just am like guessing. So, and it did come up with touch. But I don't know uh, if it's you, accurate. You had her, well, you had your her, her birth time or no? No, I don't have her birth oh, time. I just have her birthday. Time. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it could yeah. be accurate, but it could be she just really it likes would be to so make nice. It would be. I mean, I would I would lean towards that one, obviously, because <laughs> yeah. if, if she – especially if she, if it's something that she's consistently doing, yep. then yeah. there's a very good chance. Um, but that doesn't mean – Right. That I just – I had to like maybe a little bit of a – <clears throat> confirm my my thought was like that would be interesting if she was and then it came up first thing like if it wasn't I'd be like well but okay why don't you just ask her I don't know I just don't like to ask people <laughs> I if just it's someone don't I know even if someone that I don't know I just don't want I just don't want to like take away from anything this weekend by yeah. ins- like I don't want to insert myself there because you know I get a right. little overly excited with this information so I'm just like I it's interesting that you brought that up because I had been thinking about it I was like I wonder if I will actually share this or not I don't know I have I don't know I'm not I guess I guess you'll know how to respond in the moment yeah I'm a sacral generator so I don't I I I don't know until I get there (laughs) yeah exactly I just don't yeah so so we'll see I I hate packing. So after this, Mm -hmm. uh, I have my babysitter coming and then I'm going to take that time to get everybody ready because we have to wake up super early tomorrow to drive eight hours. Yeah. So I always get stressed out that I'm forgetting things. Luckily, we're not getting on a plane. I am way more stressed out about a plane. Yeah. Because like then you can only have like, you know, the bag has to be a certain weight and Mm -hmm. You can only have the travel items and sizes. And I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to deal with any of that. No. Yeah. Driving is definitely better. You can pack more things and not be so stressed. Yeah. And you have your own car when you get there. So if you need something, you can go get it without. Worrying. Yeah. I just don't like, I'm like, I have so many different shoe options aside from the one <laughs> that I'm wearing to the event. I'm like, 
I've already changed my out. Like you guys have to understand, I am re really into fashion. Like I, I did hair and makeup professionally. Like obviously physically, I'm. It's my thing. Okay, mm -hmm. and so I'm like, oh, what am I? I've planned out this outfit for two months now. Mm -hmm. Um, aside from the the dresses that I'm wearing to the 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 two events, but tomorrow night there is like this. Uh, it seems like a casual event, which I'm kind of surprised with the black tie optional for the, the party part the next day. Yeah. But like we're going to like, I think some sort of deli. So I'm like that. Dave keeps telling me that's casual. And I'm like, but do I wear a dress or do I wear pants? Hmm. Like I have like my like sleek black like uh i have these spanx pants i don't know if you've seen like any of the spanx stuff but it's like that metallic -y, shiny yeah i feel like that would like, qualify like because that's kind of like it's like casual but it's like i tried a little bit yeah or like you could dress it up so i'm like should i wear those or should i wear jeans or should i wear <laughs> this other dress that I had gotten recently that I haven't worn yet that I'm like, that's the dress I'm going to wear. But then I'm like, I don't know, like open head. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, do people think about this stuff that much or is it just me? Like I know women do, but I'm just like, I feel like I overanalyze this where I'm like, okay, now the shoes. Okay. I have three different boots that I'm probably, I'm possibly going to wear. And then I got these other new boots. I'm having a really hard time with boots. I just want to tell you, like, remember I got, um, those on boots that they were half a size too big mm -hmm. and then I couldn't return them. Um, so now I still have them and I still wear them. I just bought thicker socks and it's working out for the most part. <laughs> and so then the, uh, last week, Dave got me boots for our anniversary. I got, um, some uh what's it called oh my gosh i just lost the name of these really well-known boots and now i just forgot oh doc martens i got those and so those boots i learned i actually have never bought a pair i've always liked them but i've never bought a pair and you have to break them in yeah and so the girl told me don't don't get the size that you're comfortable with because they're gonna get bigger and i was like oh and so then I went down a size that just fit, but they're kind of uncomfortable. And so I'm like, should I have gotten the other size? And now I'm like, well, now I'm fucking screwed because now <laughs> I just got like two pairs of boots that one's too big and one might be too small, but I won't know. But they, I looked it up and it said like it could take like six weeks to break those boots in. Yeah, you have to wear them a lot. I don't have any, but I do know some people who do and they have to break them in and where you wear them like around the house and yeah. kind of like you would with like heels, I guess, with to get your yeah, feet. I've been just wearing them to short things. Like if we're going to just dinner mm -hmm. or like I have to go to the grocery store, I've been mm -hmm. wearing them, but then they're like, after like 30 minutes to an hour, I'm like, oh, I gotta take these fucking things off. So I'm yeah. just annoyed with myself. <laughs> and you should sure wanted to share that with you guys. <laughs> My my frat my fashion crisis, which is kind of like the theme of right now, which is crisis. Mine's very mundane and and silly. I realize people are in a lot more crisis than like buying the wrong pair of boots, size yeah. boots. Um, but anywho, how are you doing? Before um, we jump in, I'm doing. I'm just in it with everyone else, dealing with all the things. Some stuff I is personal things, so I can't really like oh. say a lot of stuff um, on air. But we're just kind of like navigating parenthood and you know new phases of things that aren't in like the parents for dummies one hundred one book. You know the one that you don't get when you're birth your children. Get, I didn't get that. I mean, I feel like their human design. Like, yeah, that's been closest. probably the most helpful. Is like okay, I know that you know, this is in their chart. And so this is why some of this stuff is coming up. And so this is how I can help support them. Um, so that's been helpful and just kind of, you know, doing the best we can. <laughs> and I think that's all we can really do as parents. Ain't that the truth? It's like, yep. listen, you're going to fuck up your kids in some way. <laughs> okay. It's just, yeah. it's 
we have to condition, right? We have to condition. You're condition. You're being conditioned, no matter what. As we talked mm-hmm. about, in, I don't know how many episodes we're constantly talking about. You're being conditioned by the transits, Always. and eat whether you want to be around people or not. And then when you're around people, obviously, you're receiving their definition, yeah, and from where you're open, and sometimes. Yeah, it <laughs> it happens, but yeah. <clears throat> especially with <clears throat> with little kids, you know, they're when they go into grade school, like that's they're really influenced by their peers and everything. Oh, and yeah, so it's like they're and they're the most genuine, so it's hard not to suppress all of those ways that they're acting or behaving or whatever, and then also encouraging them to be themselves because we want them to be their true selves. It's just an interesting phase, hmm. I would say. Yeah. yeah, and I'd say for definitely children that have like open or undefined G centers, um, that's really important to know who your kids' friends are in yep. those circumstances. Yep. Um, yeah, so like I'm like thinking about my my uh, older son, Milo. He has an und- undefined G center. Um, he's at, and he's also looking to see how open your child is. Like Milo mm-hmm. only has one channel, so mm-hmm. he only has his heart and his throat defined. He's an ego manifester. He has the money line, and everything else is undefined. So he's very susceptible, is what yeah. that means, to his outside world and yeah. the people that he surrounds himself with are going to be really important. And he might not also make all the right decisions in regards to relationships because he is so open. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, if you feel, you know, especially like I'm thinking like undefined spleens, like they feel Mm -hmm. uh, the attachment to other people, whether they're good or bad, it doesn't matter. Like I think about, you know, we talked about this a long time ago, like Johnny Depp and his relationship with Amber Heard that he had an undefined spleen and Mm -hmm. kept saying like, I don't know why I can't get out of this. I don't know why I can't get out of this because you're you're attached. Once you once you lock in, especially in that place with another person's design that is defined, like yeah. she had a defined spleen. It didn't matter how much and like they both both ends both ends were detrimental to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, but he could not leave because he was an emotional with an undefined spleen. Yeah, so they just don't know when to let go or when's when to enough. Go. Yeah, when when's enough? enough. We enough. don't it's we just... don't know when enough is enough with our open undefined centers. Yeah. But especially the undefined spleen, because that can there could be a lot of toxicity. Think about the immune system that lives there, right? Think about fear that lives there. Uh you can get very attached to that feeling of fear. Fear can energize you. Like look mm-hmm. at uh from the root, right? From the root to the spleen is an energized fear, an adrenaline rush, which can feel exciting, even if it's bad for you yeah Yeah. so there's so much and human design explains everything to me yeah it it definitely has been helpful I think that's besides like being trapped in the wave with the transits and Mm, yeah everything that kind of I had to get through it and thankfully my husband is an emotional so he's like dude what's up I'm like I don't know know. you know (laughs) go to the emo I what I've realized is when you're going through some heavy emotions or like an emotional transit or you had an emotional thing with someone else, like I've learned yeah. to talk it out with other emotionals because they'll, they bring the clarity on that depth because we're like, what? Mm-hmm. It's feeling, it feels awful. Somebody tell yeah. me. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm having a, a breakdown over here. They're like, so like just come just in break the down, just break down, just talk about it. Like no. just talk about it, push out the wave. Yeah. Push it out. I think mm-hmm. I, and especially for emotionals, should mm-hmm. be talking out their wave. That's something that I talk about in client sessions a lot or when I do readings. Um, that if it's an emotional that I'm working with, I'm like, you need to have someone at least that you are um expressing those emotions to so you can get them out. That'll help you move yeah. to another layer of your wave. So anyways, feel it out. (laughs) We've got some more emotions for you this week. So every open undefined SP, get ready. 
get ready because we are in for another treat. Hi, friends. Are you looking for a fun way to learn human design and astrology? Are you a tactile person that likes to learn with your hands, touch cognition perhaps, or would like to get more in touch with your inner child while you learn human design and astrology? Well, we might have just the person and also activities that you can do to allow your inner child to be filled with joy while learning and discovering more about human design and astrology. Look no further than Innocence Motivation and 2-4 Sacral Generator, Maureen Webb, that is here to bring the generator fun. She has come out with her Defined Head in Ajna, a fun and interactive way to learn human design and astrology with her brand new coloring and activity books. Yep, that's right. There's more than one. Head on over to her website through the link in our description and check out her intro to human design coloring books that include key phrases, keywords, images, and a word find to color in. And wait, she also has the good twin and the evil twin coloring books out as well. More are on their way, so make sure you follow her to be in the know. She's also a human design, gene keys, and astrology reader. So pause this video right now and go pick up one of her fantastic and inspiring coloring books that will bring out the inner child in you. Hi friends. Okay, I know you've already heard me come on here once before, but I have a very important message for you. Are you an entrepreneur? a fellow weirdo looking to reach an audience on an offer, a program, a reading, a product that you're looking to sell. We have the channel of the entrepreneur and we're looking to create very specific commercials for other entrepreneurs such as ourselves. If you're looking to get your voice out there, we have over 15,000 plays on this podcast plus a YouTube channel and we can create a very specific commercial for you to reach our audience and your message. Go down below in our description and fill out the form because there's an introductory offer waiting for you. See you over on the rest of this episode. Yeah. (laughs) So let's dive into this week. There's a few things going on. Um, So Monday, obviously, we're we're still in the the new moon energy, right? The new moon for us, because we're in Eastern Standard Time, it started for us on Monday for some people uh, that are behind us in time might have been on Sunday for you. So Sunday, Monday is the new moon Pisces. So we start off with the new moon Pisces, and this will be all about planting your seeds for the next six months on your dreams. Okay. Pisces is the dreamer and allowing our emotions, which is also a water sign, right? And this is happening in an emotional frequency. So it's about allowing our emotions through spirit to be our guide and set us up for success because the next six months have a lot of opportunity. This is really where opportunity is going to start presenting itself. And I'm looking at this week and I'm like, oh, there's a lot of stuff coming in. So especially for March, because that's when things really start to take off in March. So if you can do some sort of ritual to call in your dreams, because the energy of this cycle is all about manifestation, this particular cycle. I mean, all all new moons, are presenting themselves as how, what do you want to manifest for the next six months? But this one in particular is actually connected to manifestation. So this is about manifestation and abundance and how it's possible to receive that manifestation and abundance because abundance lives in this frequency. And we are doing a special moon gathering in the cosmic community for this new moon Pisces. So if you're listening to this on Monday, hopefully uh, that's in the cosmic community. We'll see you in a little bit. So on this day, if you would like more information on New Moon Pisces, then go back and listen to the last episode because that's where we went into a little bit more detail. And again, if you are in the cosmic community, which I know some of you have told us you've already listened again, go back and listen to the New Moon Pisces where we talked about it because now we're in it and now you're going to feel something different, especially if you're an emotional, definitely go listen. So I know we have a few emotionals in that group. 
So what is the focus of this week? Okay. Uh, again, our emotions. Okay. <laughs> it's just, that's where we are right now. We're in an emotional phase of our lives. So this week is again, all about emotions. Uh, like I said, we can't seem to get out of it. If you've noticed at the beginning of the year, there was uh, just before in the beginning of the year, there was a lot of root pressure happening during that time, um, trying to push us to move. And now it's about feeling them, being having those feelings that have been arising, allowing them to be felt and setting um, and settling into the ebbs and flows of the waves. And that's, again, what we will be doing this week. And it's interesting that people in our group and last week, Leah, I noticed, I realized a little connection in a pattern here, which correlates to all the waves that have been coming in, is that in the cosmic community, you pulled the eight of cups, uh, water, right? Uh, because the energy right now is all about flow and this frequency that we are tapping into at the beginning of the week um, with new moon Pisces, again, also water is actually connected to David's cup. And yeah, so I feel like that's, and like, I know a lot of people in the cosmic community said they've been pulling a lot of cup cards. I pulled a few cup cards recently too. Um, so that's why I love how tapped in the tarot is to the cosmos. It's, it's, it's just, it's incredible. So this particular frequency is connected to David's cup. And this is about abundance is the microcosm of life in form. So it's allowing us to be human is what I feel like this frequency is telling us. The whole point of being human is to go through experience and to know what it feels like to feel. You know, when you're floating around just as a, you know, a, a light being or an entity up there, whatever the hell they do, we don't really know, right? We don't really know. We've not, we've been there before, we'll be there again, but they don't feel things right? There's, there's no black or white with them. It just is. And that's kind of what we're here to also like a remembering of that. We are actually bigger than these bodies, right? But in these bodies, we are here to feel. And that's kind of what this energy does for us. So it's pretty powerful. It's a pretty powerful energy. And it's really going to be this actual energy is going to play a huge role after 2027. I'm not going to talk about it in here. Maybe we'll talk about it in the cosmic community. And so uh, where was I? So see what needs to go into your backpack, as we talked about last week, for your for you to be successful on your next journey, because we're about to take a new journey now that we have a new cycle starting, right? So where, what, what do you need to put in your backpack for this next journey? And we're being grounded in intimacy. That's what we're being grounded in this week is intimacy. What does it mean to bond with another? This is all about breaking down barriers, this is the part of the defense circuit, this frequency. And it's saying, what is going to take, what's it going to take to connect, to be intimate with yourself and another? And if you want to truly manifest with this new moon, look at the earth. Okay. Look at the earth gate and see how you can hold the pose more with that gate. I actually have this gate in my design that we're talking about. So I'm constantly holding the pose. But even if you don't have consistent access to it, that's what it means when it's not defined in you is that you just don't have consistent access to it. It doesn't mean you can't tap into it. And that's one thing I think a lot of the cosmic community is realizing as we watch the sun and earth gates travel through the week together is that even if you don't have it, then maybe you have the opposite end or you have the other side of the gate or maybe uh, a loved one or a friend or a coworker has this gate. And as you watch them and say, as I've been saying on here for a while, call to the universe and or source or God or whatever you feel connected to and allow yourself to stop, to pause and get clear on how you want to connect. How do you want to connect to the frequencies that are being transmitted through the cosmos? Okay. The frequencies are here to support us. There is a reason why I'm going to, it's, I, I, I started typing this and then something happened. So I'm going to explain this to you guys. This is I, all stuff that I channel it before we get on here. And so the frequencies are here to support us. And there is a reason why gate 13 Okay. Whether you have it or not, I don't care. We're going to talk about it for a second. So gate 13 is the gate of the listener. 
And it is also a direction gate in the G center. Okay. And it's no coincidence that the mechanics that play out with this particular gate um, is, is when we can stop and listen and gather stories that is in that, that it is in the listening. It is in the listening that it will then lead us in a new direction. So it's almost like when we can stop and we can pause and we can listen, we can listen to each other, that we're, it's allowing us to gather these stories that are then going to take us in a new direction. And surprisingly enough, after I wrote this out, I said to myself, you know, I think this gate might be coming into transit this week. And you know what? It is. <laughs> This <laughs> and so surprisingly enough, as I type this and and as I do have gate 13, um, and I understand this gate on a deep level, how this gate operates. And I didn't even realize that it's coming into transit until I sat for a second and then I looked. So this week, um, guess what planet it's coming in? Okay, I'll just tell you. <laughs> Mercury. So I thought that was kind of funny. I didn't even realize that as I began typing all of this out and then I stopped for a second and thought about all the gates and then I was like, oh, and then I went and looked and I was like, oh, yeah, it's here. And so I, as I have continued to say, I am fully tapped in. I, I, It's like I, it's crazy. I can't be more tapped in. I'm fully tapped into the transits and the cosmos, always have been, but now I feel like my vehicle isn't resisting it anymore and that is what we're here to teach you guys or show you guys is how to not resist the current of the waves of the cosmos. So let's keep going here. So as we still have the emotional wave we have from last week, moving into this week, it will leave towards mid end of the week, but that's just a, you know, to set you up for a new wave <laughs> that's coming in after that. But so the wave at the beginning of the week is about experience and a feeling that will then allow us to express how we feel through that experience. So what experience have you been going through lately? As I was just talking about with my shoes, right? So mine was, mine's very silly, but yours might not be as silly. So how have you been dealing with crisis? Um, if you have been, it's been influencing you to grow through a new or honest way, probably an old experience. Um, because this was in transit when Mars was retrograde. So we're now moving through it again at another point. We're coming back to a clear, probably reaching some clarity maybe around crisis. Okay. And so on Thursday, we have some new energy coming in. Um, and as I was just stating about Mars, there's a completion of where once we were in regards to money and prosperity, because that was a frequency that was we were retrograding through with Mars um, a little while back, you know, and so there's this huge opportunity of abundance coming in this week. I'm very excited about it because I actually have half of this frequency. So with full access, I'm going to tap in and I'm going to invite you to fully tap in and take advantage. And you can, you, you can too, even if you don't have half of it or you don't have the full thing, it's, it's, going to be active for you to reach out and grab. So you'll have access to this frequency um, on Thursday, starting on Thursday and for just a little over a week. So we have that. This is actually a, a very prosperous time that's coming in. And we also have a root pressure coming in briefly on Thursday um, pertaining to roadblocks. So there always has to be, you know, a little friction. You can't have, okay, here is an uh, opportunity for abundance and prosperity, but let me, let me, let me, let me, let me take it down a few notches <laughs> so that you can learn and grow from it. So this is asking us to take a hard look at maybe our past, our childhood, and see what's been blocking us so that we can then call in more abundance and prosperity. It's always always working for us, but oftentimes we feel like it's working against us, right? So then on Friday, we get a new program with a focus on friendship or our family. This is going to be from end of week, rolling into the next, there will be a focus on family and community, okay? So there's a lot of love energy coming in um, and an opportunity for love. And this uh, is a coupling partner. This coupling partner that travels together in a pair is going to give us full access to an emotional frequency all based on community. 
how to support its community. How can you be a friend, a lover, a supporter to another right now might be a good question to ask yourself during this program. This focus might bring out the desire to be more social. Uh, maybe a good week to go out and see friends or family. It's also almost as if we, we are trading one emotional wave for another one, as I talked about earlier. So our focus is lending a hand and being a friend, and we are being grounded in deliverance. We are being grounded in the heart. This is a social caution, actually. So it's like one hand is reaching to pull out the other, and the other is like, got got its like hand up in their face and is like, no, no, thank you. That's that's me. I actually have half of this frequency. So I'm always constantly like, no, thank you. So this is actually a social caution to enter into the community to supply the heart or supply the support that the community or family needs. This is about having the will to sustain. And this energy can often feel separate from the other. But in this instance, it is hooked up. So it is hooked up to the other. It's hooked up to the other end of this tribal support. So I would say, look to your community towards the end of the week and beginning of next. And if you don't feel like you have a community, this might be a time to noodle on or put yourself out there with a group and look at your environment in human design, go, like I'm kitchen's environment. So finding uh, like gatherings to go to, like once I actually looking at a meetup, like for me, if you have kitchen's environment, get on the meetup app. I cannot stress this enough. You will find your people. I promise you, this is what I started doing and things have started unfolding for me and I'm very excited about it. So figure out where your what your environment is and then see how you can find a way to tap into that in your outside world. And then you'll find people on your fractal through your community. I mean, through your environment, excuse me. So that's about it. Cool. Well, that pairs really well with the card I pulled, um, which is the Page of Swords. And I think I pulled this, might have been last week in the Cosmic Community, and we talked about the gate that it pairs with. Um, but the Page of Swords, oh, I forgot to show you guys, sorry. Page of Swords um, shows us that, that this is a time for like energy, like this is a, a movement card. I feel like it's, you see the clouds um, on the card, they're kind of moving along they're still kind of there in the picture but they're not completely gone so this could be a time for finding clarity um and like you said with the community finding the people on your fractal your timeline the people in your circle the ones who can support you um and then there's a lot of communication with this card so stay in communication with others and with yourself and invite them into like your world into your excitement and asking them to support you and how you can support them too because it's you know we should do things mutually um <clears throat> although we're, I think we're learning that as humanity. So it's also um, a good time to get out and play, like get outside and, and find some ways to like um, ignite that inner child within you. This could also mean that maybe there's, you know, some youth around you somewhere that is showing you how to come back to your childlike self and what does it, what things do excite you and make you feel excited and, curious and inspired and more creative and how can you find ways to um, tap back into that part of yourself um, because sometimes we can get really caught up in like our adult mundane lives and we forget that there are all those other things creative projects and things that can bring us joy and excitement um, so I would suggest this week if you're feeling kind of stuck um, to a like Crystal said go out and find people that you can connect with um, or B find a project or some sort of thing creative project that's helping you tap back into yourself and um, your inner child. Mm. So that's what I have for that part. Um, and then the second one I picked is don't dim your light. And I feel like that one's super accurate too. And I'll read from the book and I was kind of far away from my mic. So hopefully that was all fine. <laughs> um, we're having mic we're issues. We're going to have today. mic issues for this episode. Just, just deal with, with it. it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, don't dim your light to accommodate someone else's smallness. We are all born to shine big and bright. The universe is expanding and you are part of the universe. So expanding is part of your nature. If someone makes you want want to retract, notice that and slowly back away. They are not here for you and you are not here for them. Better yet, find a way 
to look within yourself to expand and, sh- and shine your light anyway. Page of Swords. Yeah. Um, flowers don't always open and close according to who is walking by, but instead they open and show their beauty regardless. If others don't want to be around you or make you feel uncomfortable, it's because you're shining your light on the fact that they are dimming theirs to fit in. Mm. So by choosing to shine bright, you may just inspire them to turn on their light too, or not, and that's okay. Just keep your light on anyway. All relationships are essentially an energetic agreement. The moment one person decides to start rising up and allowing their light to shine, it changes the energetic agreement and can create some waves, and that's completely normal. So the relationships that are meant to last will adapt to the energy, the change in energy, and others won't because they were likely born under their provoso of, I love you as long as you don't shine brighter than me. And that's okay. So not all people are meant to be in your life forever, but the lessons that they teach us can still live on. Hmm. Hmm. That really goes well with the channel of community, what we were just talking about with your environment and your fractals. And, you know, some people come in for a moment to teach us a lesson, to be Mm -hmm. the messenger of something that we chose to experience this life. I call them soul contracts. And in Kabbalah, they call this your tikkun, which means Mm -hmm. correction. And so, you know, like I think all the third line bonds that have broken in my past that they needed to come and show me the love. I feel like this is also a very vessel of lovey type yeah. card. Yeah. And that like, you know, the G center, the vessel of love lives in the G center, that incarnation cross. And so like the heart and shining your light out into the world, showing people their heart. And oftentimes people don't love themselves enough and you're showing them the shadow of their heart. This is something that I've learned as being a vessel of love. And that that does not mean that you shouldn't still keep shining. Yeah. And the page of swords is actually connected to the heart. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that makes a yeah, lot of it's sense. It's all, all connected. Mm-hmm. So shine your light this week, guys. And fuck all the haters out there. <laughs> <laughs> and peace out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> and mic drop. Bye. <laughs> I would love that would be like a manifestor thing and goodbye. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they are the best at Irish goodbyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'll get on a whole tangent about manifestors. And I love manifestors, by the way. I have a little manifestor. So whenever I'm making fun of any of the types, it is with love. I make fun mm-hmm. of generators all the time. We are the most ridiculous, to be honest, um, yeah. out of all the types of the generators. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways so we hope you guys have a great week um if you're watching this on youtube give us a big thumbs up uh share some comments how did this resonate with you you can send us an email you can send us a dm all of our information is down below in the description yeah and so we'll see you over on the next one we'll see ya bye bye Thank you so much for listening to this episode. Crystal and I are really here as defined hearts to provide value to you with our unique insights. If you have found any of this episode valuable to you, we ask that you share with a friend, tag us with a highlight on Instagram, and write us a review so we can reach more people. Human design and astrology are tools to guide us toward our transformation. You are a unique and beautiful being, and we encourage you to let that light inside of you shine bright. See you in the next episode, friends.